Welcome once again to CFAB blog. Uh, in this section now, in this particular video, we'll be treating uh, the projection, the last type of projectile motion, which is projection at an angle theta. Um, this is a familiar topic, but the derivation of the formulas are not um, all that easy. So we are going to learn it right now, and you'll be glad. Just pay attention. Now, when we talk about projection at an angle, the little difference between this and the horizontal projection is that from the onset of projection, you are making an angle. That's the difference. The horizontal projection, you are throwing like this. There is no particular angle being made. In vertical projection, you are throwing this way. No angle being made. But once you are throwing this way, like this, initially, the initial velocity is making an angle theta with the horizontal, as you can see. So, because this initial velocity is making an angle theta, it can also be resolved into two components. The horizontal component of the initial velocity and the, the vertical component of the initial velocity. So, if I bring this diagram out, we have something like this. This is your S, and this is your Y. This is theta. So this is what we have. Now we are going to resolve, completing this young man. Here is also your Y. How do you resolve? to the horizontal and to the vertical. If you are resolving for vertical component, for instance, vertical component of the initial velocity, vertical component of the initial velocity, which is your y. The vertical component of the initial, u means initial, y, v means final velocity. So the vertical component of the initial velocity Provided we are talking about vertical, we are dealing with this is x axis, this is y axis. So we are talking about u y. Y axis is for the vertical, y x axis is for the horizontal. So what do you do? Just close this as if you didn't see this. Now what are you working with? You are working with u y and u. This facing this is the opposite hypotenuse. So in Sokatua, we are making use of so. We have opposite and hypotenuse. So what we have here is sine theta is equal to opposite, which is your y, your sub y, divided by hypotenuse, which is the initial velocity u. Now, when you cross multiply our initial vertical initial vertical component, our vertical component of the initial velocity becomes u. This will multiply this sine. Theta. U sine theta. So if you are asked to solve the vertical component of the initial velocity, not the vertical component of the velocity, initial, initial velocity, what you are making use of is U Y is U sine theta. Now, what of the vertical, sorry, the horizontal component of the initial velocity? I'm going to clean this. This way, we are making use of u and u x, which is adjacent hypotenuse. Adjacent and hypotenuse is k. So we have cos theta is equal to adjacent is u sub x over hypotenuse, which is u. So when you cross multiply, this horizontal component of the initial velocity becomes u cos theta. This fundamental is very, very, very necessary in everything we are going to do in this topic. All the formulas to be proved, all of them are based on this, from A to Z. So pay very much attention. We are going to be making use of this now. So the same way now, if you watch our diagram on the board, the velocity at any instant in time is also resolved into components. As you can see that, 
into components, into components. Uh, but they are all dependent on the initial velocity, same as this. So we are going to forge ahead now and uh, get our velocities before we enter into the time of flight, just like we did in horizontal projection. Let's get what this from this vertical projection, vertical component of the velocity is before we enter the time of flight, maximum height and the, the range. Okay, firstly, um, Vx is still called the same name, the horizontal component of the velocity at time t. So that is Vx. The horizontal component of the velocity at time t. So that is Vx. So in this case now, if we want to prove, we know that u plus g t. u plus g t. So we are talking about Vx. So Vx is equal to ux. Sorry. Vx is equal to ux. Anything we are dealing with, we are dealing with the fundamentals. So what we have here is that Vx is equal to what is ux? U cos theta. Now let's talk about the vertical component of the velocity Vy as time t. Let's see how that goes. Now we are talking about the vertical component of the velocity as time t Vy. So in this case now, Vy is, if we use the first equation, Uy plus g t. Now, when it is coming down, you make use of this. But sometimes, if you are asked to calculate Vy at this point, when it is going up, this changes to minus. But if we are asked to calculate for Gy here now, Going to have something of this nature. I mean, Vy at this point, that the projectile is at this point V, and we have our phi here. So at this point, it is going up. This will now be Vy is equal to Uy minus Gt minus Gt. So, but if it is coming down this side, we are making use of plus because it's favoring gravity. But against it, it becomes minus. So, always know the point where they are asking you the question. Okay. Now, we have that. Vy. Let's just make use of this. When this is going on. Vy is equal to Uy is, from our proof, is U sine theta minus Gt. This is Uy, Vy. So it depends on the question, but if it is here, coming down becomes plus. This changes to plus. Going up this way changes to what? Minus. Be very careful. So that is Vy. Now, what is the resultant velocity, which is V? The velocity at any time. The velocity at any time, V. V is simply square root of what? Vx squared plus Vy squared. The velocity V is equal to square root of Vx squared plus Vy squared. We have gotten Vx to be what? U cos theta. Y, Vy is U sin theta minus Gt. After calculating this, anything you get after doing this calculation gives you Vy. Okay, the same thing here. Now, next thing they can ask you is the direction of V. The direction of V is simply on the direction of V, which is, that is theta, is it theta k phi? It is tan phi is equal to opposite, opposite, which is Vy, over adjacent, which is Vx. As easy as that. 
anything you get, remember VY is U sine theta minus GT, Why this is U cos theta. So anything you get, divide and take uh, the tan inverse of that, that gives you direction at any instant in time. Okay, that is that. The same thing is applicable here. The same thing is applicable here. The difference is that in this case, you are not making use of small t. You are making use of capital T. That's just the difference. So Vx max Vx max is u cos theta. Vy max is equal to u sine theta minus g t if you are making use of the first formula but if you are making use of this formula v squared is equal to u squared plus 2g h now in that case now this is y this is y so everything changes. In that case, we have that V Y max becomes U Y is U sine theta. Okay, since we are going up, this is minus. So minus 2 G H. Minus 2 G H. That becomes our V max. Now, what is the direction? The direction is exactly the same. In this case, our direction is what? Alpha. So the direction becomes direction of, okay, first of all, V max itself is square root of V y max squared plus V. So we have V x max squared plus V y max squared. The direction is exactly the same. What you just need to do is to put max here. So the direction of this. In this our diagram, that direction is alpha. That is alpha. Here changes to alpha. Is max. Here is capital T. That is all. That is all. Here it also changes to what? Max. So once you have learned the first one, the, this is the same thing. Just change anywhere you see capital H. I'm small, it is capital H. Capital T, you replace it. That is all. Okay. Now with all the concept concerning the velocity now, we are going to enter the time of flight under projection at an angle. How to get the formula and how to use it. Another thing is the maximum height and lastly, the range. Okay. Now, from our diagram here, this is where this particular object was projected. And as we can see, it also falls on the same level. So the time it will take from here to this point is the same time it will take from here to this point. So we have that t is equal to 2t. So first of all, let's get the time to reach the maximum height. The time to reach the maximum height, which is small t. So the time to reach the maximum height, small t will give us, we are going to prove with any of the equation v is equal to u. Remember, when going up to reach the maximum height, minus g t. Minus g t. And as we can see, at maximum height, the final velocity is zero. So, maximum height, height. So, we are making use of uh, uh, the vertical component. So, this is V Y U Y minus G T. But at vertical component, at maximum height, this is zero. So, we have zero is equal to U Y minus G T. So, when this crosses, we have that G T is equal to U Y u sub y. Now, what is that time to reach the maximum height, which is t? t is equal to u sub y over g. Do we know what is u sub y? Yes. 
u sub y is u sine theta over g. Therefore, time to reach the maximum height, small t, is equal to u sine theta over g. This is the time, time to reach the maximum height. Time to reach h is the maximum height. So time to reach the maximum height h is u sine theta over g. So I believe this is clear. I don't want to clear. Let me show you something here. Then what is the time of flight? We have already developed the fact that there it will fall on the same plane of projection, which means that the time it will take to reach here, in the same time it will take to reach here. So that means that t, which is the time of flight, capital T, is equal to 2t. Yeah, because t plus t will give me 2t. That simply means 2, what is t now? We are saying that t is u sine theta over g. So note this. This is the time of flight, and I believe this is the formula. This is actually a formula you see in your test book. t is equal to 2u sine theta over g. Now, this is how to derive that. If the axle calculate, most times in project, projection at an angle, questions are normally asked the same plane of projection, nothing changes. The same plane of projection. So, time of flight, 2u sin theta over g. Time to reach the maximum height, u sin theta over g. But in case, um, what do you call it? The, Plane of projection change here yeah, is possible. You can project something at an angle instead of falling here, it falls further uh, or before that. So, in that case, now your time of flight changes to u sine theta over g plus square root of 2h over g. So, this is used when you have different plane of projection. Why this one is the same plane of projection? This is not popularly known because questions are not are mostly not asked on this, but on this. So but note the two of them. Okay, so this is what all we need to know about the time of flight, the same plane of projection, different plane of projection. Now let's talk about the maximum height. Now, the maximum height can actually be derived from two different formulas. That is the two equations of motion. The last two equations of motion, that is where we can see the maximum height. So we have um, the second equation of motion, h is equal to u plus half gt, half gt. So in this case now, what we have here is, remember, at maximum height, this is zero. So here is zero plus, so I have gt squared, half gt squared. So this gives us gt squared divided by two. Half gt squared means gt squared divided by two. Now, this is equal to doing half g, over 2 times t squared. t squared means time to read the maximum height, and that time to read the maximum height is u sine theta over g. Everything squared. Remember, t is squared. t is squared, so you have u sine theta over g, all squared. So we have that our maximum height is equal to g over 2 times u squared gives us u squared sine theta squared gives us sine squared theta divided by g squared gives us what? g squared. g can cancel one of these. Therefore, our maximum height becomes u squared sine squared theta over 2 times 1g that is remaining. So this is your formula for maximum height on the projectile. You have u squared sine square theta over 2g. 
So you can use the second equation of motion to derive that. You can equally use the last equation, what is the third equation of motion. So I believe this is clear. If you have any question, you can ask. Let's go over to the third. Let's see how to use the third equation to see if we are going to get the same thing. Now, using the third equation of motion, the third equation says that v squared is equal to u squared plus. Okay, this is now when it is coming down. That is minus two g h minus two g h. So this is very direct. We know at maximum height, final velocity is zero. So this is zero. Why we are talking about vertical? So this is u y squared minus 2g h if this cross is the sign changes to 2g h is equal to u y squared now make to um, h the summit of the formula h becomes u y squared divided by 2g what is u y we know that u y is u sine theta everything squared divided by 2g. Open this bracket, u, h becomes u squared is u squared. Sine theta squared is sine squared theta over 2g. So any one you like, if you like, you use the first one. Any one you seem, that seems easier for you, the first one or the second one, you still arrive at the same answer. As you can see, u squared sine squared theta over 2g. This is the formula we use to calculate the maximum height. Okay, now let's quickly um, see how to derive the range. The range, which is another important term here, the range. Now we can get the range using the second equation of motion. Now we have that s is equal to ut plus half gt squared have gt squared but in this case we know that we are not the horizontal distance here is r which is the range and we are making use of not ordinary time but the time of flight t plus this does not exist horizontally acceleration due to gravity so this is zero zero multiply everything here becomes zero so we have that r so this is x so we are talking about horizontally so u x we know is u cos theta times what is t t is 2u sine theta over g now r is equal to if we bring everything together u times u gives us u square so we have u square 2 cos theta sine theta divided by g u times u is u squared this two is still here cos theta sine theta over g because this is over one now this is a standard trigonometric function this is a standard trigonometric function that we know that two cos theta sine theta is equal to sine two theta you can use your calculator and verify that Get any angle of your choice and put it for theta. Do this, you see that it's sentinels. If you like, put 45 degrees. That is 2 times 45 is 90. So 90 is 1. If you put 45 here, put 5 here, multiply by 2, press everything, it's still going to give you 1. So this is a standard trigonometry function. So instead of me writing 2 cos theta sine theta, I'll simply say that my range. My range is u squared sine. I'm replacing this now from here to here with what? 2 sine 2 theta over g. So this is your range. So range becomes u squared sine 2 theta over range. Now, another thing they can ask you here is when is the range maximum? When is the range maximum? So note that. So we have arrow max exists. Arrow max exists. That is maximum range exists 
when theta when theta is 45 degrees or 2 theta is 90 degrees please note that when theta is equal to 45 degrees that is 2 times 45 is 90 or when 2 theta is 90 degrees so that sine theta so this now becomes arrow max we now be u squared sine 90 degrees over g and we know that sine 90 is 1 sine 90 is 1 1 times u squared will give us u squared over g so that is our maximum range note this very important so r is max when theta is 45 is equal to 45 or when to theta is 90 degrees so the formula for the maximum range is simply u squared over g if you have any question you can ask okay um now we are going to solve a question that expresses how these formulas are being used so let's solve a question quickly okay um this is an, we have a question on the board to express all the formulas we have learned so far uh, we have this question says a body is projected from the ground with a velocity of 30 meter per second at an angle of 60 degrees so the initial velocity u is this we have theta here 60 degrees to the horizontal calculate i person says the time of flight i i says the horizontal range now the triple i says the velocity with which it strikes the ground and its direction they need the direction of velocity we are giving g in bracket so to solve this we put down our solution i the time of flight t we know is 2u sine theta over g so we have 2u sine theta over g now what you need to do here is just to substitute your parameters and punch in your calculator now we have 2 times what is u u is 30 meter per second times sine theta we know is the angle 60 degrees divided by g in bracket which is what 10 so when we multiply this this cancels we have 6 sine 60 degrees what we have as our time is 5.2 seconds to one decimal place 5.2 seconds so this is the time of flight in this particular question just apply your formula to use sine theta over g substitute correctly punch your calculator make sure your calculators are in degrees then you punch then we have question number two Question number two, I, I, says the range. We have the range is u squared sine 2 theta over g. Take note of your formula. So what is u? We already know u. 30 squared sine 2 times theta is 60 degrees divided by g, which is this. So if you punch correctly, 30 squared should give you 900, 2 times 60 is 120, so 900 sine 120, 900 sine 120, anything you get divided by 10, so we have 77.9 meters, 77.9 meters, so that is the range in this particular question. Now the last question we have here is I, 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 the velocity with which it strikes the ground. Please be very careful. I'm going to clean. Now the velocity with which it strikes the ground, which is Vmax, with which it strikes the ground. So in this question, we are looking for Vmax. And we know you cannot get Vmax. The Vmax formula says square root of Vxmax r squared plus v y max squared so you cannot solve this without knowing these two 
this is not a problem. We know that Vx max is equal to u. And u, according to our question, is 30. So we have 30 already. V y max is equal to u sine theta minus g t. u sine theta minus g t. So u is 30 sine 60 degrees minus I have 10 times what is t? We have calculated our t which is time of flight to be 5.2 5.2 so we multiply this 30 sine 60 this is 25.98 minus 10 times that is 52 so 25 minus 98 minus 52 25 minus 98 minus 52 gives us minus 26 Point zero two meter per second. This is meter per second. So this is what we have as this, and this is what we have as this. So what we just need to do is to pick them and put in bracket. Forget about the negative sign. Anything negative squared will give you positive. So it's not going to affect our answer. So it depends on the question. So our V max becomes square root. Vx max, what is Vx? 30 squared plus this is minus 26.02 r squared. So this will give us 900 plus minus 26 squared. So if you punch this, this will give you 677.0404. Add that to 900. So we have that square root of 1577.0404. So take the square root of this, that gives us Vmax. So square root of that, 1577.0404. So this will give us 39.7. Meter per second. That's nine point seven meter per second. So this is what we have. Thirty nine point seven meter per second. Now the direction of this. The direction. Now the direction is going to give us. Let's call that direction phi. Tan phi is equal to opposite which is vy max over adjacent which is vx max now there is an easy way of solving this actually anytime you are giving something like this instead of applying this formula which is still this is wasting of time especially for those in jam just know that the direction the direction of the velocity before hitting the ground is the negative of the angle given. Our angle given to us in the question is tan is theta, which is 60 degrees. Therefore, the direction phi, the direction phi is simply minus theta. Minus theta. This will give us minus 60 degrees. For example, sake, you don't need to solve, but if you want us to show that using this, what you just need to do is, we already know what this is. We have tan phi is equal to Vy max is u sine theta minus gt. Y Vx max u. Using this, this is what we have. But we know that t, which is the time of flight, is 2u sine theta over g. So putting this here, tan phi becomes u sine theta minus g times, what is this? 2u 
sine theta over g, everything divided by u cos theta. So this we cancel this, as we can see. So the only thing left here now is u sine theta minus 2u sine theta over u cos theta. Now u sine theta minus 2u sine theta, only one will remain. This side, the magnitude of this is bigger than this. So what we have now is, I just want to show you how, because I know some will ask how. How did we get this? Now this is, this minus this will give us that tan 5 will be equal to minus, because 1 is there, 1 minus 2 is minus 1. So minus u sine theta over u cos theta. This can cancel, so we have that tan 5 is minus sine theta over cos theta. And we know that this is a standard derivative, sorry, standard trigonometric function sine theta cos theta is tan theta. So what we have here is tan phi is equal to minus tan theta. So I this thing, so if theta cancels theta, phi is equal to minus theta. So instead of solving this long journey, that's the purpose of this question. Instead of solving this, trying to input everything, just anytime they ask you the direction of the velocity before hitting the ground is the negative of the angle given to in question. So in this question, the angle is 60 degrees. Therefore, the opposite of that is just minus 60 degrees. Um, for more questions, go to the exercises section and the past questions section, both JAM and WAIEC. You are going to see a lot of questions concerning this. Thank you once again. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like, and also share. We meet in our next video.